Now Tristan Viscano set to get it started. And we are underway from Hard Rock Stadium. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. And they will be led out by a man in his sophomore campaign as the quarterback. And when you watch him play, everything just looks like it comes so naturally to him. When he's dialed in and finds that zone, passes are crisp, he sees the field really well, and he takes charge as the leader of this offense. The game's first play produces six yards, brings up second down. Again, it's Jackson as he'll stay on the ground. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Pickett back to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Look at the big fella go. Touchdown, Jaguar. 62 yards. And the Jaguars need just three plays to go down and take the early lead. Let's make no bones about it. On paper, they're the better team. They're at home. That's a strong opening drive. And just think how many times we've seen this type of a matchup. Just what you said. Better team at home should steamroll them. And we've seen it go the other way. Sometimes, though, they buy into it and understand we are the better team. Let's go out and prove it right now. Doug Peterson says, let's go for two here. Here's Pickett. And he's going to be taken down. It's a sack. And they fail on the try for two. If we had a dollar for every time we heard a team talk about explosive plays and how valuable they are, we probably wouldn't have to work very much. And we just saw a big one there. And then they tried to go explosive again, going for two. Yeah, is that a little too risky, you think? Just kick the extra point? And you know, I, I'm all about getting points. And if I feel good about my kicker, I go ahead and do that. But with that ball at the two-yard line, going for two, I think it's awfully tempting for teams nowadays. So here's the Charger offense making their way out. And they will be led out by their rookie quarterback. For every rookie prospect, there are always nerves involved in this moment. Running your team out to start a game. But there's a reason they brought him in. We're willing to make him their starter today. They believe he can overcome those nerves and lead his team to a victory. We saw him do it at the collegiate level and really make himself into a leader and someone you can envision doing the exact same thing here in the NFL. Demario Davis there on the stop. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. And they'll keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times. And what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Third and nine here. Here's Hayner looking to throw it. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Haven't met a corner that's worked this off yet that ever admits to worrying about man coverage. How about the play there, breaking that pass up? So on fourth down, on is the punter, Pat O'Donnell, to kick it away. Pulled in at the 24. 49 yard punt, five on the return. And they will take over first and 10. So, time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. They'll begin the drive with Jackson on the ground. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That's a good way to start the drive, 17 yards and a first down. The way the game has changed a little bit is that defensive goals have changed in a big way. Nowadays, it's not so much stopping certain yardage or whatever, but it's not giving up big, explosive plays. Anything over 10 yards, you're trying to hold teams below that. When they get one against you, as we just saw there, 
Boy, that really hurts them. It puts them back on their heels a little bit and makes them a little bit less confident. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Jamie and Sherwood there to make the stop. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right, they did something to disrupt that timing. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and ten. Now pick it. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. And that'll bring up fourth down on the big sack with a loss of five. Six-nothing our score after one. The Jags with the football to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. Now pick it on fourth down. And it's going to be batted down. It will go the other way with the football. What a real head scratcher there. And that will force a turnover on down. Play action. Here's Hayner to throw. Throw it across his body, and it's intercepted. Picked up by J.C. Jackson. And the Jaguars will take over here just shy of the 30. They brought the house that time on the young rookie. Maybe a little rattled through the pick. And you have to be prepared for a lot of pressure as a rookie quarterback because most defensive coordinators are going to test you that way. So when you see that, the ball's got to get out of your hands quickly, and that means your receivers have to understand they have to break off their routes quickly as well. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And the shutout, at least for now, is still intact. Great job by the defense after, Charles, last time this crew was out here, remember, they gambled in their own territory, didn't get it. But the defense held, gave up no points. And Brandon, sometimes it all just comes together. I think the head coach senses it today. His defense, they're absolutely on fire. It doesn't matter where the ball is on the field. When that defense trots out there, no one's moving it, no one's scoring. And he's playing to it right now. Well, that group's chasing a shutout. Teammates here on the offensive side. Going to try to provide a touchdown on it and gain the momentum even more on this series. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. the incompletion here now third and two the Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout they'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter on third down here's Bo and he's taken down at the 43 but not before picking up the first 41 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. Well, after an interception, last thing you want to do is go three and out, give the ball right back. They avoided that. Yeah, you definitely do not want to do that. I remember in college, I played with a really big-time player on defense. We ended up getting an interception as we passed the offense coming out. He told them, if you don't take care of this football, you'll have to answer to me later. You definitely want to take care of it, pick up first downs. Right back to him on first down. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit.
Delay of game. Austin. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. Still second down. Play action, pick it. Open man, the tight end Henry. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Now yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Second down, another carry for Jackson. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Up the middle they go with a big back, Jackson. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. 18-yard touchdown run. And the Jaguars will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. And that's certainly an important score right there because they gave themselves a two-score cushion heading towards halftime. Now you got to force the other team out of their comfort zone, and it changes the way you approach the second half as well. How you want to do things on offense, and your defense feels much better too, having that lead. Doug Peterson says let's go for two here. Pickett will try to throw for this. And this one incomplete. So they went for the two. They don't get it. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. And as he approaches to kick it off, he might be thinking this could be a 14-0 lead with a couple of PATs as he sends this one away. And up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. The Chargers going to take over here one more time before the half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that will bring up second down. And this time, they'll just keep this on the ground. And this looks a lot like the last play. Behind the line of scrimmage, he's tackled for the second straight go-around. Great job by this Jacksonville D. So we come upon halftime in what's a 12-point game at the break. As we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Chargers getting ready to go here to start this third quarter as they begin their second half here, Charles, offensively. You know, not where they want to be, obviously. They're losing in this ball game, but very much within striking distance. We'll see what adjustments they make in the second half. Is that the old glass half full, half empty type of a deal? Which way do you want to look at it? Because you're right, they're down on the scoreboard. But they're definitely opportunities now because if they want to go ahead and get going in this one, get back to the running game. I think there are going to be some places to go with it, and I think the offensive line will appreciate the chance to fire out and hit people. That's a good point because they virtually had nothing going in the ground game in that first half. Now here's a 
throw right side taken in by his tight end. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. So eight yards on the completion there. And now third down and six to go. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Painter sets to throw it. That ball nearly intercepted, but he could not hold on. Oh, pick there it certainly would have been nice. Instead, at least, it'll be fourth down. Well, they have any designs on getting back into this football game in the second half. They're going to need to be much sharper offensively than they were on this opening possession. Not much happening here, and it'll lead to a fourth down. I know there's no magnet in the ball, but sometimes for the punt returner, after such a scramble, it sort of feels that way, doesn't it? He has it, he loses it, somehow the ball finds his way back to him. A tone for his sin, and you know he's taking a deep sigh of relief right now. And this will be a Jaguars first down as the tackle made just shy of the 40. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by Jamie of Sherwood, and they'll start out with great field position at the 47-yard line in enemy territory. So that, Charles, may be the play that this defense has been looking for. They've hung in there, and if they lose this game, it won't be from a lack of effort on their part. The key question is, can the offense finally do something because we're into the third quarter, and a zero is still blowing on the scoreboard. And a gain of five, and it's second down. To throw is Hayner. Throw left side complete. That's right. First target, first catch, and a first down. And first down. First and ten at the 35 yard line. Painter looking to throw. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. Just what they need a lecture from me, but subpar offense is what helped get them into this spot. And now they're continuing the trend with incompletions. That won't get them out of it if they don't change something soon. On second down, they'll run it here. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Painter. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Williams. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to the 30. And the attempt at three will have to come from the other end of the field as time has run out on this third quarter. Back now in Miami. It's Charger football, but they trail here as we get going in quarter number four. Painter to try it on fourth down. That is caught. And down inside the 15 he goes. So this offense able to convert on fourth. And now a fresh set of downs here, first and 10. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes, and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. The Jaguars gonna go ahead and use their first timeout. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Got it. Now a second and 10. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. What can they draw up now? Time to find out on a third and eight. And he's going to be taken down, sacked 
back around the 18 yard line. They'll go for it. Here's Hayner. He's got his target. That's complete. And the Chargers are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Hayner looking to throw. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. Well, with this rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw, Charles, though, the strength of that arm. That was an absolute rifle for the completed touchdown. It absolutely was, and let's face it. You think he was really ready to get that first touchdown? Absolutely. He threw that pass with authority, just as you described. Big-time arm right there, and let's face it. A lot of quarterbacks just be pitchers in baseball. The fastball was usually their best pitch, and we saw it there. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. Well, they can smell victory, partner. They can see it on the horizon, but certainly we're not done yet here. Defense still has three timeouts, and obviously this is a very slim lead they're holding on to. And let's face it, the easiest way to get this done, challenge your ground game, challenge your offensive line, your tight ends, your receivers, anyone who's going to lay down a block. Don't let there be penetration because they're going to stack the line of scrimmage and maybe bring extra people to the ball. If you can do that, make them burn their timeouts, run out the clock, life will be good. But if you really want to gamble a little bit, a quick play action, quick throw, might be able to get it done. Just make sure it's not incomplete and stop the clock. An ideal down and distance to try to finish this thing off. Second and inches. Now a give. It's Jackson. And he will have a Jaguars first down. And that ought to be the one that seals the victory. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. And somehow he's going to get a yard out of this as he fought through that first contact. It's second down. On second down, this is Jackson. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10. They run again with Jackson. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. I guess the simple question, why not just take a knee there? I don't understand either why you would take any sort of a chance. We've seen it happen in the game of football. Doesn't matter whether you watch high school, college, or the NFL. Some people get a little greedy trying to get that extra running play in, and it can backfire. Pickett. And it's incomplete. They're still throwing to the very end. But now this game is over. So this will be a win for Jacksonville. And it was a bit of a strange game. They were held scoreless through the entire second half. But their first half output, that's enough to carry them to victory. And that's an odd game to watch, isn't it? Because when we saw the output in the first half, you think to yourself, okay, they've got something working here. They know what they're doing. They'll continue that along. But instead, it's goose eggs in the second half. Fortunately, enough of a cushion and enough defense to carry them home. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. And with that, we sign off from Miami.